Sunday to look at this resurrected Jesus, the one that very often we forget to look at. And then we look at him and we, for some reason in our minds, we always go to the Jesus we see in the Christian films. And we imagine that Jesus with brown eyes and brown hair or blue eyes, blondish curly hair. Depends which film you watched. And there is one very serious there is one, there's, a, there's even a laughing Jesus. Have you seen that one? There's a film of a, a, a happy Jesus. Um, but I think that's more accurate because the Bible said that he was anointed with joy above his fellows. Amen? So he was a happy, happy man, full of the joy of the Lord. And he, uh, this is the lovely image of the resurrected Jesus. Uh, chapter 1 of the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ and verse 13. Oh, let's do verse 12. No, let's do verse 10. <laughs> I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, sorry Lord for the bad pronunciation, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And this is John speaking. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white, like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at, at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars that are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, only a few more verses, these things says, he who, has ho who, who holds the seven stars in his right hand who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say their apostles are not and have found them liars. And you 
have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. That sounds a pretty good church to me, don't you think? Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. This is God's word. Amen. Can you see, did you see the image of the resurrected Christ? Did you see the image? He is not that man anymore. Although some people have seen him come because see what happens. His countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. What happened to John? He fell as dead. His body could not take the splendor, shiny glory of the Lord Jesus. And this natural body cannot take it. You ask the question, why is it that many people when they come up to altar calls, they fall down? What happens to them? We don't hypnotize them. Sometimes we don't even touch them. We went to, a school, uh, to this school. Um, it was a club or something like that for young people. And they were absolutely, they're not Christians at all. We mean my husband and I. And so Pastor Steve goes there and, want, and pray, begins to pray for the kids, right? And he holds their hands and they pray and they're falling down. And then these two kids come and say, why are they falling down? You are pushing them. Why are you doing that? Husband says, I'm not pushing them. The Lord is touching them. The Holy Spirit is touching them. And they're just falling down. And they say, no, you are pushing them. No, let me show you. You come here and I'll pray for you. No, no, no. Come on, let me pray. And you will see. The Lord will touch you. I will not touch you. You can keep your eyes open. I will not touch you. And you will see. I said, okay. And so they come, these two youngsters. And then Pastor Steve said, okay, Lord, in the didn't touch them. Did you keep your eyes open so you can see. Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch them. Then what happened? Whoa! They were like, whoa! My knees, my knees were, whoa, yeah, it's true. <laughs> it was amazing. What happened? Because our natural body cannot take his presence. Shall I tell you another story? Yeah. We were in India. And we, I don't, I, some of you already heard it. But this for me was an amazing, uh, amazing uh, to live this. We were here in, in, in India. We were in a bus. Then, you know, the slums, they don't have clear ways. There is no street. It's all like that. I don't, I don't know. It's amazing. These people are so clever, the ones who live there, to remember every little thing. Because in these slums, you can get lost. But they don't. Uh, well, I, I think they don't. I don't know. And anyway, so we stop the bus as far as we can go. And then the man said, uh, now we need to walk. So we have to walk like a mile or something to where a, f a group of Christians, like four or five of them, were meeting. The thing was, we, were so, we, were, we went with my husband because they organized a crusade in Hyderabad. But it was canceled because there were problems between Hindus and Muslims. And there had been things going on. So uh, because it was too much danger, they canceled that. But we already had our tickets. So we had to go anyway. And we believed God that he would open doors. Amen? And so this brother began to uh, whatever uh, thing. Uh, oh, let's go here and let's go there. So we were like, okay, let's 
let's go. So he says, this is the only thing I could arrange. This little meeting here, the only a few. They've been here for a few years. It's very hard. And this and that. And he's so excusing because they were only a few, a handful of people. And we said, don't worry. It's fine. So we are following him. And then obviously the people there are looking at us because it was my husband. It was me. Um, and then it was two other guys. Uh, a cockney one from London called Nick, and another young boy, very tall. I think it was Pastor Roy's uh, son. Uh, very tall, very blonde, uh, so white, with red cheeks. And then, imagine these foreign ones there, so all the people like, you know, they began to follow us. And so we are all going there. And took the place, and then people are like, oh, you know, <laughs> those advertisement when somebody's running and people begin to join them, it was kind of like that, except we were not running, but they were just joining us, and they were following us. By the time we got to the place, it was, it was like a room that was missing one wall, and it was quite tall, like a drop. So it was like a stage, practically. <laughs> And so we came in, and it was full of these people. They came in with us. <laughs> Obviously, there's no doors to close. So they come in, and they were just looking. <laughs> so, great. No microphones, no nothing, because we were going to a little group. And so, in the end, it was about, I don't know how many whoever fit there and people there. And so Pastor C began to say, okay, we came here to talk to you about Jesus. He's the only God. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the only way to the Father. And I'm not going to tell you about Jesus. I'm going to show you that Jesus is the only God. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call some people here in the middle with 10 different conditions of sickness. And you will see how my Jesus will heal them. And when Jesus healed them, then you will know that he is the only God. And so he mentions 10 different things guided by the Holy Spirit. Can't even remember. So 10 different things. 25 people came to the front. Well, we can have room for those 25 people. And so Pastor Steve stood on the side and said, look at these people. These people came to the front. This is with an interpreter. Because they got these conditions. Now you will see how Jesus will heal them. Now look at, look at closely because you will see it. Nobody closed their eyes, nothing. And so he says, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Guess what happened? Before he finished the prayer, the 25 people fell down like dominoes. Pim, 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 pim. And they were all looking. I was thinking, what is my husband doing? <laughs> How brave is he to trust that the Lord will do the miracle? That's fleshly thoughts. But that is supernatural from the Lord. Amen. Then each one began, we helped them stand up. And then what happened? And they're like jumping. I'm healed. I'm healed. Every single. We couldn't even hear the testimonies. Because they were all jumping so excited. So my husband said, okay, okay. Like, can you see? They say they are healed. Now, how many of you want this Jesus? And they were like, whoa. It was glory. It was amazing. Because that's the Jesus we serve. That is the Jesus we serve. The Jesus of miracles. Amen. Amen. And then I'm going to tell you another one. When we were in Uruguay, because I remember telling uh, Dominic and Mel, we were in Uruguay. And then these people were there. It organized, the pastors got together, organized a conference for seven days. But the main pastor, uh, 
uh, told us and warned us that at the third day, they, they tried to do this many times, but at the third day, it was so much witchcraft going on in that area, so much, that at the third day, always something happened. There was either rain or big storm or the pastor couldn't speak or something. And they, can, and they had to cancel the, 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 the crusade. So I said, okay, praise the Lord. Except, he says, this time all the pastors, we are in unity. And we want this conference to happen. Seven days. So we are in the main square in Montevideo, organized big platform, and the people began to arrive, right? Uh, the first day, first day was raining, was raining. So they, they put up a tent. Second day was okay. The third day, my husband wakes up, guess what happened? No voice. He could not speak. We read in the newspapers, a baby was sacrificed on the beach. The Macumba people were doing witchcraft to stop the event. So they said, we need to cancel it. You, you're the main speaker and you can't speak. We need to cancel. And my husband was saying, no, sign language because he couldn't speak. No, we are going to head. We are not going to cancel it. The third day came, the night came. My husband still no voice. The platform is there, all set up. They're doing praise and worship. My husband, yeah, I'm next to him, no voice. I've been married to him for two months. No voice. And then, as soon as they introduce him, he goes up the steps. He takes up the microphone. Guess what happened? The voice comes up, comes out. And he preached, and we did the seven days of crusade. More than 5,000 people heard the gospel. Every night, salvations. But the most amazing one, it was, praise the Lord, the most amazing, I say to the guys, even dogs were getting saved. <laughs> because when we will do the altar call, the dogs will come first. But people were getting saved. And they were falling down. And the dogs were going, ah! Because the people are falling down. It was amazing. <laughs> but the most touching story was a man was in a bus with a gun in his pocket, wanting to end his life. And saw all that multitude. So he thought to himself, this is his words, because later on he called the radio uh, to tell the testimony. And did, he said, I was on that bus and I thought to myself, who are those crazy people? And so he got out of the bus and there he said, I heard the message of Jesus and I gave my life to Jesus. I don't want to end my life anymore. I want to live for him. Amen. Wow. Every night after that crusade, they will go with this pastor who had it, his own radio program and with Pastor Steve, and they will receive the calls and they will talk about what happened in the conference and then people will be calling with the testimonies. It was amazing, amazing. That is the God we serve. Amen. That is the God we serve. Every single day of your life, the enemy wants you, you to take your eyes from that glorious Jesus into your circumstances, into the bad things you see, and flood your mind with all kinds of thoughts. But we serve a glorious Jesus. A glorious Jesus whose eyes are like fire. They are fire. Son of clothing with garment, his head hair with white wool, his eyes like a flame of fire. What fire is that? The fire of his love. The fire of his love. Uh, Songs of Solomon. The many waters cannot quench his love. Amen? Because the fire in his eyes, the many waters cannot quench that beautiful love. 
Amen. And he loves you. And of his mouth is he this double-edged sword that is so sharp, that is so powerful. He is the word of God. And when we love God's word, we love Jesus. When we love Jesus, we can't help but to love God's word because he is the word of God that became flesh. Amen. Amazing, his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Can we get close to this sun? No way. Can we look with the naked eye straight to the sun? We cannot. Imagine looking unto Jesus. Imagine. But he, he is so good. He is so faithful. He is so perfect. All the other gods, all the other false gods, you have to do things to please them, to obtain salvation. But our Jesus, our God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. And our Father sent Jesus, the King of heaven, to become a man, to do the sacrifice for us. We no longer have to do any sacrifice. No longer. We are not like other false religions. Where they can see suffering. And they have this heart. So hard in heart. And say oh well. They deserve that suffering. Let them suffer. So they, in the next life, they can get a better life. How wicked, how horrible that religion is. How horrible. How horrible to see a human being like you, like yourself, with the same feelings, same blood running in their veins. See them suffer and think that that will give them a better life. There is... There is no repetitions of life. This is the one life we have. This is the one life we have. And Jesus will reveal to you. For you to know in your way. I'm so grateful that he interrupted my world. My life. And spoke to me. And that song, that amazing hymn, Amazing Grace. How rich I was. And many songs are being written about how I find Jesus. But let me tell you, he found us. We didn't find him. I didn't know I was lost until he found me. I didn't know I was lost. I thought I was okay. But we are not okay. We don't have to suffer to gain his attention. He did the suffering for us. Can you see what an amazing message we have? I know you know this. But can I remind you and encourage you about it? Then we should be boasting about that. We should be boast. Paul says, I forbid that I should boast in anything. Except the cross. Well, we are supposed to be boasting about the cross. We are supposed to be proud about what Jesus did on that cross for us. Yes, it's not supposed to be apologizing for our message. We're supposed to be boasting about the cross. That amazing king of glory came and died on that cross for us wicked sinners. So we can have salvation. Can this, this amazing Jesus intervene in your life today? Can he intervene in your life today? And you be so worried about little things of your life, which are big. But for him, it's nothing. The creator of the universe in one second can turn your life around. One second. One second. You don't need technology. You don't need charisma. 
You don't need ability. You no, no need anything. In fact, the most wicked one that you are, the most not able to be, the most useless person, the better. Because the excellency is of him and not of us. Stop looking at yourself and start looking at him, what he can do in you. Amen? What he can do in you. But I'm only a woman. God can use a woman. But I'm only a child. God can use a child. But I'm only a man. God can use anyone. But I'm 94. God can use anyone. God can use anyone and wants to use you. Amen. So thank you, Lord, for all these lies of the enemy. Today, we're going to stamp them under our feet. Because if he can use a donkey in the Old Testament to speak to this stubborn person, then he can use us. He can use you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to this, and I'm going to finish with this. Because this uh, church in Ephesus was a really good one. This church in Ephesus, look at all the things they did. The works. They work hard. They had patience. Uh, and they could not stand. They could not stand evil. They could not bear evil at all. They didn't like evil. And they tested people who call themselves apostles and they were not. But well, today that word apostle is very popular, isn't it? There's many apostles. And the funny thing is that most of the apostles and bishops live in Africa. I'm just joking. Don't know why. And America as well? Yeah. Okay. Just a joke to lighten it up. Okay. And here it is. So there's many called apostles. And they were testing them. They found them liars. They exposed them. And then you persevere in your patience. You labor for my name's sake. And you have not got tired. You didn't become weary. You kept going. You kept going. On, on Tuesday with Barbara, we were saying, keep sowing seed, let us not become weary in doing good. Every Tuesday, we are there, you know. Some Tuesdays are great, other Tuesdays are not. Saturday, we were there again, even in the little rain. We were there, freezing cold, <laughs> sharing with this man. But praise the Lord, not becoming weary, keep going, showing the glories the glory of Jesus. But guess what happened? They forgot about his first love. And can I encourage you this morning? If you hate evil, guess what? Good. I want to hate evil and every wicked thing because God hates evil. If you don't like and you can't stand those those false teachers and apostles, guess what? Good. If you're still patient and you try and you encourage yourself in the door and you keep going, guess what? Well done. But let us not forget everything we do is out of our first love for Jesus. Our first love for Jesus. I go to the streets. We go to the streets. Every Tuesday, Geraldine, because we love Jesus. We expose wickedness because we love Jesus. Everything we do because we love Jesus. And we don't want this love to get cold. We want to love him more passionate, more sweeter. Some think, people think I'm getting more wiser. They begin, I can't trust everybody now. I'm more wiser. Really? Really? For me, I said that. But I, when the Lord showed my heart, it wasn't that. 
it wasn't. You know, you become wary of people. You know those things that people put on Facebook sometimes. Yeah, yes, and excusing themselves. I learned one thing now, and it's not everybody's your friend. You can't trust everybody and all of these things. Christians, don't reshare that. Don't reshare that. Because that's not what we do. Because those who are full of Jesus, when we are persecuted, we love more. When they speak bad about us, we forgive and we bless them. We learn to trust more Jesus and we will learn to trust the people as well. We learn more. We become softer. We become sweeter. We become more loving. We become more forgiving. That is to be a radical Christian. More loving. More forgiving. Other radicals from other religions kill and do all kinds of wickedness to be radicals, but the radicals for Jesus love more. And to the enemy, even more. And we bless them. And we and they squeeze us and the love of Jesus flows out even more. Are we there yet? No. But he is in charge and he's making sure that we will be presented to our Father in that way, blameless, sanctified, flowing with the love of Jesus. Do you trust him? Do you trust yourself to be faithful to the Lord? No. I don't trust me. But I trust him. That works in me. Trust him that he works in you. Stand up, please.